Aloha and welcome to Knitted Paradise, where the needles are clicking and the yarn is squishy. My name is Lucia and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Pearl of the Pacific. Today is Saturday, September 26th and this is episode 90. Well, hello everyone. It's, uh, it's going to be a short one today, <laughs> just so you know, I don't have a ton to talk about, uh, but I thought I'd record anyway. So the only announcement I have for this week is that Vogue Knitting Live, that's for some reason that's hard to say, Vogue Knitting Live Chicago is happening next weekend in downtown Chicago, and I do plan on going on Saturday. That's the plan at the moment, because I have a bunch of stuff going on Sunday. If my afternoon plans get canceled, then I may go down then, um, but we'll see. At the plan... At, at the moment, my plan is to go down Saturday because I don't have anything else going on. And yeah, so if you're going, please let me know. I'd love to do a meetup of sorts. Uh, I was just talking to someone else and I don't think there's a podcast or meetup or anything like that. But uh, we can definitely set up a time to meet and a place to meet. And yeah, that'd be fun. Sorry for the short notice. All of a sudden it crept up on me and now it's next weekend it's odd because it used to be at the end of October so I thought I had a couple more weeks because I really wanted to get my shawl design shawl design done by then but that's not gonna happen and it's also in the beginning of October which kind of threw me but anyway I do plan on going so that's the only announcement for this week and on the island I have two things um they're both over here one is I started my peaceful pullover again. Um, if you remember last time, I was, I didn't like the gauge. It was a little too loose. And so I went down a needle size. I actually went down two needle sizes for the ribbing on the bottom. And then one needle size for the body. And it is going to be plenty big for me. It's, it's supposed to be made with positive ease. So it's going to be plenty big without a ton of blocking. So I have been working on that. You can see the pattern up on the front there. Kind of. There you go. And I had, I had some real struggles with this. Not because the pattern, I just forgot to look at the chart. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just keep going, going, going. And then, no. So I had to go back and look at the chart a few times and then um, look back a couple rows and fix some things and it's been crazy. It's a really fast knit though. I mean obviously I've started, I forget when I started this. I mean it must have been this week because I didn't have it to show last time. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out. This is, um, the yarn is Miss, Miss Babs Katahdin in First Choice is the color way. And the pattern is Peaceful Pullover by Maria Yarley. And it was so kindly gifted to me by Amelia. So thank you, Amelia. I'm really enjoying this. It's a really fast and addictive knit. Uh, as long as I keep the chart there and I keep looking at it, it's really easy and really quick. So I'm really looking forward to finishing that. I love how the colors, like there's just enough that it's not boring, but it's not distracting from the pattern, which I like. So that is that, and I'm keeping it in my bag, my bike bag from Amelia, because I thought the they matched pretty well. Plus it's nice and large, so my pattern and uh, project fit in here quite nicely, along with the huge balls of katahdin <laughs> that I wound. So that's that. And uh, I'm hoping that I'll use a good chunk of yarn, and whatever's left I may make a hat or something out of. We'll see. Maybe with a similar pattern. So we'll see how much is left. There's 1700 yards in the whole thing and I don't think I'm going to use all that. So we'll see how much is left when I'm done with the sweater. Yay! It's kind of fun to knit a fingering weight sweater. It's the first fingering weight sweater I've ever knit. So there will definitely be more in my future. I have a few more fingering weight quantities so I'm looking forward to that. The other thing is I cast on a pair of whiz bang socks and these are by Sarah Shu, who so kindly gifted me the pattern when it came out a little while ago. Ta -da! 
It looks nice when you stretch it out. There you can see it. When it's kind of bunched up like this, before you kind of stretch it, you can't see it very well, but there it is. Ooh, that's looking really nice now that I look at it on the camera. And the yarn is Lorna's Laces Shepherd Stripe in purple and white. And I'm not sure if this yarn is available anymore. I bought it three and a half years ago. Yeah. And I bought, um, cause they sold it in shorter skeins. Cause I went to put, we put it in Ravelry and, uh, cause it wasn't there. I've had this yarn for three and a half years. I bought it right before, or a few months before my wedding because our wedding colors were purple and blue. And I bought some of this yarn, which is the purple and white. And then I bought some blue and white and I knit matching socks for my husband and I. And the pattern I picked, I forget which one it is. It, it had a bunch of slip stitches in it as well. And it had something that was close to linen stitch in between the st slip st stitches. Anyway, it is not stretchy whatsoever. And it, they were just too small. My husband couldn't even get them over his heel. And I've learned a lot since knitting socks, or since then in knitting socks. And I had ripped the, I'd worn mine a few times, but they were just kind of tight and I was annoyed with them. So eventually I ripped them out and with the thought of knitting another pattern that was similar, um, cause I did like the slip stitches, the way it looked in the, in the yarn. So it's looking fabulous. And so I was browsing since I had just finished some things, I finished a bunch of things last week, as you remember. And um, I was looking back through my kind of hibernated things to see like, oh, what should I pull out to work on? And I had, of course, down by your hibernated things in Ravelry is also your frogged things. And I, remember, I saw these socks and I was like, oh yeah, I had a plan of knitting those at some point into something similar. And then I remembered the whiz bang pattern and I thought, oh, perfect. It's similar, but it's stretchier. So that was where I got these. It was, it's only in the last couple days I realized I could have knit this for the first challenge of the Harry Potter knit along with O Loops because Whiz Bang is based on the Weasley twins and they were both in Gryffindor and I'm in Gryffindor and you're supposed to knit something based on your house. <coughs> but I've already started them and I'm not going to put them back and restart them so I'm just going to knit them and then knit something else for the challenge. <laughs> oh well. That's okay. So I'm really happy with how these are turning out. You should definitely check out the Whiz Bang pattern uh, by Sarah Shu of the Innocent podcast, which you should also watch if you don't. And um, yeah, so it's the yarn's all kinky from when I knit it last. I didn't wash it, I just wound it up. So I'm looking forward to those being done again and having some more purple socks. So those are the only two things I've been working on this week. They're both new, so that's kind of exciting. And I'll probably just be working on those for a while. Uh, till I get some new stuff on the needles or some old stuff. I kind of want to, I'm in the mood where I want to finish some of the older stuff. That's why I went and picked back up the peaceful pullover that I had ripped out and the socks that I had ripped out. And I kind of had them back on my mind of projects that I wanted to redo and there's still a bunch of things on the needles that I really want to finish so I'll probably be on a finishing kick in the near future um, to you know because you can't cast on new things when you have old things taking up the needles so I may cast on another sock since I do have a free set of sock needles by some miracle <laughs> that rarely happens at least these days it seems to not happen very often so cast on a new sock soon but other than that there's not a whole lot going on in the world of knitting here in the household um, haven't bought anything well I did buy stuff but it's not coming yet so you'll see it sometime in the future there's a large pile of yarn coming my way <laughs> it I have it's allocated for projects already it was stuff that I had kind of been stockpiling in my mind of things I need to get for 
either gifts or um, things that I promised people for um, like the, uh, a friend of mine who would help me with some of my photography for my patterns I had promised to knit her a hat and so finally she was over and I showed her all the hats that I knit and she picked one out and um, then I showed her all my yarn and she picked one out and it was the wrong weight it was I had it I have the same colorway in the socks game and uh, so I bought it in I think a DK or worse it I can't remember and um, so that's coming and then my aunt uh, want some socks so I got her that and then I forget what else I got in that order but we'll see when it gets here right <laughs> so that's it for knitting um, I did want to show you a game because we're about to have some friends over to play some games and so I had gotten some games out and I wanted to show you this one I'm actually using a tower of games to hold up the computer as you notice I'm a little higher than I normally am because normally I'm sitting in a child size Ikea chair which is about this high off the ground I'm looking at it over there maybe this high it's not very high off the ground so normally I'm a lot lower but we moved the coffee table over here so we have more room for the game table and uh, so I'm sitting on that so it's a little higher <laughs> less view of the fireplace more view of the iron so anyway this is Castle Panic dun, dun. this is a game that we got at Gen Con this year I don't think I've shown it on the podcast. It's a game that my mother-in-law has, and she loves it, and she introduced it to us. And we thought, oh, this is great. We need to get this. It's a cooperative game by um, Fireside Games where you are in a castle, and you're trying to defend the, ca the castle from monsters. And we bought it with all of the expansions that are out so far. And which come with bigger bosses and other special things and fun times. So here's the board. So you have these um, pieces that you set up. Well, I'll turn it kind of right side up, maybe. At least castle will be right side up. So you have these castle walls that you put here, and then you have outer walls that you put here. They're actually cardboard that you put in stands and put around here. And then um, at the end of everyone's turn, you, or at the end of each turn, so every person, you roll, or you pick two monsters out of the bag, and then you roll to see where they go. So they end up uh, on each of these numbers. And then you have cards that you can play to, um, to shoot things out of the castle. So you have different ranges here. So you have the forest range, and you have the archer range, the knight range, and the swordsman range. So depending on your cards, you can, you know, shoot bow and arrows, or you can, um, I don't know, what, what do knights do anyway? And then you have swordsmen, so they're obviously on their swords. Knights have their swords too, but I think they got other stuff. Anyway, uh, I, don't th I think in the, one of the expansions, there is a card that will allow you to shoot something in the forest. And so you just have this barrage of monsters coming from the outside in, and if they get in, they do knock down castle walls. There are um, cards that will allow you to rebuild your castle wall, uh, but once they've knocked down all of the inner, like, towers, then, I think they're called towers, and then the outer ones are called walls. Once they've knocked down all the towers, you lose. So you better not let all the monsters knock down the towers. So it's really fun. It's, I think it takes about an hour to play, maybe less, depending on how many monsters you put in the bag. That That's kind of the limit of the game, because it ends once you've drawn all the monsters, and once you've killed all the monsters, or they kill your castle. So depending on if you want a shorter game, you just put less monsters in there, I guess. But it's really fun. It comes with... We haven't, we, we haven't played it yet, this version. But here, here's some of the cards. I think this, I know, this is the original one of the expansions, but... Ooh, glary. Obviously, we haven't taken out of the thing yet. This is an archer. It says, hit one monster in the red archer ring. So there's different colored ones, and then you have any colored ones that you can use. And um, I won't explain to you the whole game, but that's the basic idea. Here, oh, here's the castle walls that I was talking about. So they are like things you'd, and there's like bases somewhere else that you stick them in. Ta-da! Things that happen. So 
it's a fun cooperative game. It's fun for the family. And uh, fun stuff. And that's really it. I'm sorry it's so short. Um, <laughs> but that's the way it is. Uh, if you'll be at Vogue Netting Live next weekend, please let me know. And we can meet up, which would be awesome. Uh, if not, have a great week, and I will talk to you next week and hopefully have some things to show. <laughs> well, some more things to show. There'll hopefully be some progress on these things and maybe some new things. So have a great week. Bye.